What's going on everyone, it's Justin here. So I figured it'd be a great time to go ahead and clean the house, set it up, and the first place I really had to start was my desk setup. So you guys might know on the channel, we love doing desk setup videos, whether it is a makeover or putting together my own places. And last year I made this whole like crazy desk setup in my home office, which is pretty much the master bedroom, but it was like a large L-shaped desk that was able to go up and down. It had like the Ikea Carly countertop on this side and also the Boca concept side over here and it really is like the ultimate l-shaped standing desk in my opinion it is super durable it looks great and a year later i'm still very happy with it as you guys might know, I also purchased an office space around the same time, and that was the reason why I turned this into one large desk instead of having three stations in this place. But that also has four workstations above, and the biggest thing that is common between my home office and my actual office is that the cable management needs a lot of work. So I've got a few excuses for that. One of them is the fact that we change the tech around all the time. In the home office, it's always been the Mac Pro and the Apple XDR display, but I also changed out the speakers, the lighting a little bit, and also added a console table in the home office as well for like the router, the sound bar, projector, and all that kind of stuff. So in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and walk you through some cable management tips while I actually organize my own setup because the cables really did get out of hand and with such a busy schedule, I just didn't really care to go ahead and fix it. Over at the office loft though, the reason why everything is so messy is because we're just trying to figure out the setup right now. Uh, what computers to use, what editing stations. So now that we've kind of figured out where each person's going to go and which piece of equipment we're gonna have, the storage and all that kind of stuff, it is time to go ahead and organize all the cables there as well. I'm gonna start up by showing you what each cable setup looks like before we clean it up, take out everything and just start fresh again and also go through some of the accessories that I've used for my own desk setup and can definitely recommend to you guys. If you guys enjoy videos like this where I do like tips and tricks, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also leave a comment down below as to some cable management and organization tips that you might have. Because even though I'm a huge fan of having a clean setup and on video it might look like it is very tidy, I honestly have a huge problem with keeping everything organized at all times. So when it comes to my cable setup right now, as you can probably tell, it is a really big mess. And I remember when I first put this desk together about a year ago, it wasn't actually that bad and we really tried to tie everything together and hide all the wires. But after adding a few different things, including a new monitor and also a new set of speakers, the entire cable setup just changes and that is going to be something that happens all the time with your desk setup. So I feel like with the summer coming up, it's just nice to do a bit of like a spring cleaning and go through your entire setup, maybe make some upgrades here and there. But in my home desk setup, which is where I actually spend most of my time editing, it is one where it just got so messy and it's an area where as soon as you walk into the room, you can see this entire like bird's nest of stuff. And the main priority here is going to be like stripping everything down again and um, just unplugging everything that needs to be. And with the cable channel that is built into the desk right here, figure out where we're gonna drill holes effectively and just have it all route through while hiding some of the slack in here. We're gonna try to use as many reusable cable ties as possible so we can shuffle things around, but also try to take full advantage of the actual compartment right here, which you can find on certain desks on the market, such as the IKEA Alex, and try to just have everything go in very smoothly. And I do like how there's an open channel here as well, because some of the cables just don't really fit in underneath. And by going that way, um, it just seems to work best. So yeah, we definitely have our work cut out for us. And the first thing I'm going to do is just start by detaching everything. And um, so I'm gonna unplug this right here. And I kind of have an idea of where everything goes uh, when it comes to speaker wire, the Thunderbolt ports and the monitor and the lights. But if you don't, then it's important to tie them together and label them to ensure you don't lose anything. So some of the most important accessories that we're going to be using in today's cable management setup are ones that you've probably seen before, as well as a few that are completely new. Um, and ones that I didn't really know about until I like went on like a specific website and saw their kind of add-on section to a desk setup. The first thing you're gonna need the most of is cable ties. And there's a few different types here and I've used some in the past. This right here is just like your standard 11 inch cable tie that is relatively long. You can get whatever length that you need. Um, and I usually recommend getting it in the color black and white just to have some choice depending on your setup. The other kind that I actually recommend more than the standard one is the resealable one because if you guys ever want to change anything in your cable management setup, then you're able to do so. There's nothing worse than like setting up your entire like desk and end up having to change one thing and you have to go ahead and cut the cable tie again and attach a new one. So 
In the past, I've had some desk setups where everything was like completely wired in. It looked really good, but whenever it was time to change like one thing, I would pretty much have to take apart the entire setup and that was not exactly fun. So being in the tech industry, I think the biggest change that I've made in the past few years is that instead of like going crazy with like locking everything in permanently, having a setup that is versatile and does a good job of hiding the cables. And the solution for that is to make everything very adaptive and using stuff such as Velcro or resealable ties. Because I'm someone who has also completely switched over to standing desks with like the whole work from home trend, I would say another great accessory is a magnetic cable hider. And with my uplift desk right here, they actually do have that accessory and the magnets are very strong. And with the legs being metal and flat on a standing desk, you're actually able to just like attach it to the side very easily and it hides some of the large wires or the cords coming for the desk mechanism itself. So the first step in the entire setup is just to take every single thing apart. It even though at some point I did try to organize the cables when I was putting this desk together, over the whole year a lot of things have changed and different accessories kind of come and go. So I think the easiest way to do things is to just start a clean slate entirely and while remembering where we put some of the cables before it is now the time to kind of optimize it and improve it in areas where it might have been lacking. One thing that I really like about this desk and that the IKEA Alex desk has as well is a nice pass through at the end for all of your cables to go through. This is a good place to put any like power cords or like any cable bricks that you want to be able to just store away and don't exactly know where to hang. I also really like drilling holes in the desk and using cable grommets to allow for an easy pass through of all of the wires that are going into that area just to keep it very clean and organized. In this desk in particular, there is kind of like an open pass through as well as the cabinet itself. So we can run all the cables to lead to the outside as well as ones on the bottom that go over to the power brick. So now it's time to loop everything and we started by bringing over the audio cable to the preamp that is relatively small and in this cabinet and I also looped over the power cord for the monitor just to have it go from the power brick through the entire system and out the hole in the back just to once again have a nice seamless experience to have the cord go exactly where it has to. In this case, the hole in the back of the desk definitely made sense because there are multiple cables that go straight to the monitor as it has four different ports and some of the adapters that go along with it, such as the speakers, the preamp, and also the Belkin dock. Generally, when it comes to cable management, I used to try to just like tie everything together, but I think nowadays having holes available in areas where there are more than one cable and like a central hub for all of the wires to be able to hide and like tie the extra slack into is how you're going to get a nice and clean setup. Once we've hooked everything up, the next task was to actually just cable tie everything together. And I do like to use resealable ties just because I'm able to change the setup at any time because in the past, I would think my setup is permanent, but within a couple weeks, things may change. After all the cable lengths are determined, it's good to mark where you want to have your power brick where everything can kind of go into and also tie up all the additional slack. And as you can see, the desk setup looks a lot cleaner than it was before. Some other small tricks that I also have is actually drill a hole into some of the drawers and you can actually have some of the cables and card readers go there if you're a photographer or videographer. So that just keeps one extra thing out of the way. So generally speaking, even though the setup is very, very complex and there are just so many things going on, we were able to make it look relatively clean at the end of the day to have it both functional but also effective. A standing desk is especially hard to do because the cable lengths have to have additional slack in certain areas such as the power cord to ensure that it is able to still move up and down. But now that the home office desk setup is figured out, let's move over to the office loft. So on the topic of cleaning and optimization, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, CCleaner, which is a tool that makes your PC faster, cleaner, and safer. There are a lot of things on your PC that you don't need and potentially even know is there, and here is how you can solve this. There are a lot of things on your PC that you don't need or are potentially harmful, and the way you can solve it is with the CCleaner Health Check, which is a 4-in-1 tool to boost privacy, space, speed, and security. It is very important to run a regular check on your computer because as you use it for your day-to-day -day tasks, you start to download a lot of things and you just don't know a lot of times what things are living on your computer that could be slowing it down or even accessing your private information. 
It also has a software updater built in, which is able to check all the programs that you have on the computer to ensure that everything is up to date and is the newest version. And that is something that I really like to do. CCleaner is available for Mac, PC, and also Android, and there's a free version that exists for all platforms. The PC version also now includes a driver updater, and it's usually a paid tool, but you can go ahead and try it for free, and I've got the best price discount code on screen and in the top link of the description below. Another accessory that we're also using today is from Ergonofis. And those are the standing desks that we've used in quite a few setups now, including my office. And the high quality wood is great, but they also have some nice accessories that go with it. And with the cable management solution that they just came out with, it gives a combination of a lot of ports for power, as well as a metal sheet that is gridded, so you can attach all of your wires and zip tie them very easily while keeping everything in a nice contained space. There is a few different options when it comes to doing your cable management. There are like baskets from Ikea, such as a Signum, which is inexpensive and one that we've used quite a bit. But the Ergonova solution is one that includes a power bar as well, and it actually hides everything on one end. So being able to just like attach it to the bottom of the desk and having a plate that blends in everything very nicely is a solution that I think I like even more. So these two accessories are the ones that I use the most in my home office setup. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before and get started with that. So now we're at the office loft and after moving in at around March, the main priority was just to get the systems going and like bring the computer over, pick what kind of speakers and accessories and just where everything was going to go. And I've got to say for the first few months, I definitely moved around a ton. Originally I started over here, but because it is so close to like where the camera equipment's being set up, I decided to move over to this side. Um, so this right here is kind of of like a more permanent setup as to how we plan to configure the office. So the cables haven't actually been organized at all. It's just been like plug and play. Uh, there is a power bar that is down there right now, but you can probably see the cables are an absolute mess. So when it comes to what we're planning to do in the organization process, the good thing is that I actually have these uh, drawers right here with a side panel that I had made from a custom mill worker, which has like the same slatting that you see in the basement. And that is able to do a pretty good job of hiding the cables, but when you like come up the stairs, you can definitely see that the cables need some work. And you guys did comment on that from my office loft video. The first thing we're gonna do is unplug everything once again, have these cable management pieces installed and the power bar connected, and from there start to anchor each piece and still have available slots for other things to plug and charge. So let's just go ahead and get started on that. So when it comes to the office loft, there's actually four standing desks and two of them are occupied on a daily basis and the other two are more flexible depending on who is in and what tech that they would like to use. Generally speaking, the setup is with an iMac 24 inch, which is very clean and fits the size of the desk very nicely. But the challenge here is that it is a standing desk and organizing cables on a standing desk is always a lot more difficult. It's kind of the same deal that I had in my home office, except I do use the standing function on these desks a lot more. So the key criteria with this setup is to make it as minimal as possible and not have too many things overloading the space, but at the same time consolidating all the cables to this management thing from Ergonofis. You essentially want to start by tying all the slack together after attaching the power bar to the frame and just velcroing all the channels and bricks so that they don't come apart and that it has like a nice floating look so you can't see any of the excess wire hanging below that line when you're looking at the desk in other angles. There are certain things in the setup that never change including the iMac and there are also other pieces such as chargers for the phones and laptops that you want to have a little bit of slack on just to have some flexibility. So after we looped all these cables and bricks one by one, I think what we're seeing here is that it is important to have a setup where you have areas that you can hang different pieces to. Whether it's a custom cable management setup from Ergonofis or the IKEA Signum, I typically like to just have things all mounted to it with cable ties and Velcro. With this setup specifically, we did use more Velcro just because there was a lot of slack to tie together because the power brick is so close to where we're mounting everything else. And with Velcro, it's a lot easier than cable ties just because you don't have to cut any of the slack. One thing that I also plugged into the power brick was the actual standing desk mechanism as well. That usually comes with a larger cord because not everyone's going to go ahead and have like this custom setup. But by plugging that in as well, there's only one cord that comes out of this entire desk setup and that is the bar. So here's a look at the completed desk setup cable management at the office. So 
So the last setup right here is the Formula One sim. And this is kind of like the additional thing in the video. And I know I've been talking about the fact that I was gonna upload a video of this for a very long time, but between all the delays, some technical issues in the parts, and just like waiting for the new game to come out because it was close enough, we are gonna be working on the video for this Formula Sim within the next month. And it is all up and running at this point. But one issue is that the cables are really, really messy. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff. And with something that is in the middle of my office, we definitely wanted to address this. So the setup itself has the monitor, the keyboard and mouse, some speakers, the brake pedals, the steering column, and that is pretty much it for the cables. And as you can see here, it looks way more complex than that, but it really isn't. And with a computer that is built just to play the simulator, I just want to make it look super minimal like it did in photos. So with the speakers being like a non-permanent part of the setup, we're still trying to figure this out and I decided to move it out of the way. And as you can see, there's also a massive power brick from the steering column as well, which is essentially unavoidable. And the way to hide that will be either through a bin or just to store it underneath the chair itself. As a temporary solution, I was kind of using this Mastercraft power brick and it just didn't look very good. So I decided to get a white one that matches the entire theme of the setup itself. And as you can probably see, we also painted the frame and I decided to use Velcro for this one just so it stays in place, but it definitely isn't permanent if I decide to change things around. Because it does blend in with the frame nicely, we just attached it on the side right here. And even though it is not like the perfect solution, I could have got maybe a shorter brick. It is one that definitely looks better than what was there before. The next thing is to move that giant brick under the setup because it isn't something that gets very hot but at the same time it takes up a ton of space. The next step was to actually tie together all the cables that come out of the steering column because with so many around it is easy to get caught with the pedals and you definitely don't want that. This was all done with a very simple zip tie and looped around the front side. So now that all the main cables are addressed, we just had to group together the cables coming from the monitor, which is the power and the display port. There is a USB port as well, but it wasn't one that we were using due to the amount of power that these ports need. But with a frame like this, just using a white cable tie is able to hold things quite nicely. And with the built-in channels, it hides all the cables and it just kind of slots in. And if you also want to go a step further, you can also try to get like a cover or something that is able to close off that channel. It now all plugs into the power brick after coming down that main channel and I feel like the only alternative solution could have been having the power brick underneath the front side of the frame and that would allow it to hide that entire brick entirely but there would still be a wire coming out the middle. So there you have it, it is our completed Formula 1 simulator with all the cables nicely organized and I'm really excited to drive this a little bit more and after a few hours of practice we've definitely been getting the hang of it. I plan to do a video of this in the next month so I hope you guys are excited for that but otherwise the setup at the moment is the Samsung G9 monitor that is 49 inches and has a 1000R curve radius as well as some Logitech peripherals and the headset and the only thing that we need to do to kind of finish it off is to find a proper speaker setup that looks good and unifies with the setup. But that is pretty much it for today's videos on cable managing my own desk setups and I'm really happy to see that all of them turned out very very nicely as well as some of the personal tips and tricks that I can recommend for your setup. It's a summertime, it's a great time to like optimize the things in your house, update a few things as well and as someone who has kind of started spending a lot more money on home stuff and just looking at the small details even after living in this place for four years, I definitely think it is one that is fun and constantly evolving so if you guys enjoy videos like like this, make sure you let me know and I'll see you all in the next one.